Throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Humanity has no shortage of monsters and demons lurking in mythology and folklore, created from the dark recesses of imagination and superstition. Some monsters are rather unique to their respective mythologies, such as the Wendigo of Anishinaabe folklore, or the Minotaur of Greek mythology. However, some legends have a blood-curdling way of making their way into the nightmares of people across countless cultures. Such is the case with vampires. Horror fiction of the late 19th century into the modern day portrays vampires as attractive human-like beings who sleep during the day away from the sunlight and arise at night prowling urban areas for human victims. When their quarry is seized upon, they bite into their prey's neck with sharp, cruel fangs, draining them of their blood until not a drop is left, effectively killing them. A familiar and chilling tale in horror stories and scary movies. But the vampires of mythology are strikingly different from modern-day Hollywood. As with dragons and giants, nearly every culture on Earth has a blood-sucking being lurking in its folklore, dating back thousands of years. Blood drinking and similar activities were attributed to demons or spirits who would dine on human flesh and blood. Even the Christian devil was considered synonymous with the vampire. Almost every culture in the world associated blood drinking with some kind of revenant or demon, or in some cases a deity. In Greek mythology, the monstrous Lamia was said to attack children during the night, drinking their blood before devouring the remains. Chinese mythology tells of the Chongxi, the hopping vampire, which resembles a corpse stricken with rigor mortis dressed in mandarin attire with arms stretched out, who drains its victims not only of their blood, but their very chi, or life force. In Akan mythology of Ghana and Togo, lurks the Asenbosam, or Sasabosam, bat-like humanoids who feed on the blood of people and animals who stray into their territory. Philippine mythology has the Malanangal, another bat-like humanoid creature that separates from its lower half and flies through the night on large, bat-like wings, searching for pregnant women to suck out their blood, as well as unborn fetuses. The Deragdua of Irish mythology appears as a beautiful young woman who seduces men before killing them and drinking their blood. Folk tales from Central and South America have El Chupacabras, near alien looking monsters that prowl ranches for the blood of livestock. Slavic mythology has the Striga, a reanimated corpse that flies through the night and consumes the blood and entrails of the living. Folklore from Aboriginal Australia has the Yaramayahu, a small, red-furred creature who ambushes unsuspecting people and strategically drains their blood through suctions on their fingers and toes. These few examples of vampiric monsters are but a taste of the many legends to have been told throughout the centuries. So diverse are they in their appearance and their characteristics, that to name a collection of definitive traits would be next to impossible. However, 
the sole trait that unites them all is their consumption of human and animal blood. The creatures we identify with vampires today are rooted almost exclusively in early 18th century southeastern Europe when oral traditions of many ethnic groups of the region were recorded and published and when superstition ruled over reason. In most cases, vampires were revenants of evil beings, suicide victims, or witches, yet may also be created by a malevolent spirit possessing a corpse, by being bitten by a vampire, or by drinking vampiric blood. Belief in vampires became so pervasive in Europe that in some areas it caused mass hysteria and even public executions of people believed to be vampires. A multitude of different theories have arisen to explain where the vampire legends and subsequent hysteria may have begun, particularly centered around misunderstanding of how bodies decompose. As a corpse's skin decomposes and shrinks, its teeth and fingernails can appear to have grown longer, appearing as fangs or claws to the superstitious. As internal organs break down, a dark purge fluid can leak out of the nose and mouth. Those unfamiliar with this process could interpret this fluid to be blood and suspect that the corpse had been drinking it from the living. But bloody corpses with long hair and nails were not the only cause for suspicion. During the late Middle Ages, Europe had been stricken with bouts of the Black Death, bubonic plague that ravaged the continent. Before people understood how certain disease spread, they sometimes imagined vampires and other demons were behind the unseen forces, slowly ravaging their communities. Trying to kill vampires, or prevent them from feeding, was a way for people to feel as though they had some control over disease. And so came various practices or rituals to keep vampires away, and the dead from returning as one of them. Some methods included severing the head from the body, even turning it around, severing limbs, placing a brick in the mouth, placing iron needles in the heart, or burying the corpse with a sickle over its throat. Fear of vampires fueled the superstitious folk, leading to methods of protection against them, and if need be, to kill them. Some legends, and much of common horror fiction for that matter, claim that vampires cannot abide sunlight, either weakening them severely, or burning them to a pile of dust. Being demonic and unholy in nature, Vampires could be repelled by holy relics and symbols. The cross could hold them at bay. Biblical scripture read aloud would cause them pain, and contact with holy water or holy wafers would burn their flesh. In addition, they are said to be unable to walk on hallowed ground or cross running water. Garlic and other aromatic plants were said to keep vampires away, stemming from garlic's use in folk medicine. In order to kill a vampire, one must drive a stake through their heart, behead them, or burn them, though some traditions may call for any combination of the three. It is also said that weapons of iron or silver, both considered pure metals blessed by heaven, are rather effective against the undead. With these superstitions held as firm belief, the Western world became flooded with stories of people dying and allegedly rising from the grave, stories of supposed hunters killing suspected vampires, and the exhuming and desecration of corpses believed to be cursed. But vampire lore would soon change forever 
with the publications of Gothic Romantic European literature of the 18th and 19th centuries, about the time vampire hysteria was peaking in Europe. Vampiric figures appeared in 18th century poetry, such as Heinrich August Ossenfelder's Der Vampir, about a seemingly vampiric narrator who seduces an innocent maiden. The first prose vampire story published in English is believed to be John Polidori's The Vampire in 1819, about a mysterious aristocrat named Lord Ruthven who seduces young women only to drain them of their blood and vanish without a trace. In 1872 came the novella Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu about a young woman who is preyed upon by a female vampire. In 1897, Irish author Bram Stoker released the consummate vampire tale, Dracula the story of a 400-year-old vampiric count of Transylvania, loosely based upon old vampire legends and the historical Vlad Tepes III, better known as Vlad the Impaler. From Bram Stoker, particularly through his character of Professor Abraham Van Helsing, we received the solidified traits, powers, and weaknesses that would come to define the vampire in Western popular culture. Vampires were cemented as people who had died and later rose from the grave, and continued to live their undead life through the consumption of human blood. They became almost fully nocturnal, sleeping during the day in coffins, often filled with the soil of their homeland. They could not cross running water, enter a home without spoken permission, cast a natural shadow, or a reflection in mirrors. They could not appear on film or withstand the presence of garlic. Vampires were given the powers of superhuman strength and speed, heightened senses, hypnotic capabilities, the ability to defy gravity, and the power to shapeshift into bats, wolves, rodents, or even mist. And with these powers, came well-established weaknesses of sunlight, fire, holy relics, and they could be killed by decapitation and by a stake driven through the heart. But Dracula not only re-established the vampire's inherent attributes spoken of in mythology, but their overall appearance and disposition as well. Rather than the walking corpse and demonic-looking creature that they were portrayed as in mythology, vampires would become much more human-looking, and would almost always be aesthetically very attractive, alluring to their would-be victims. Or at the very least, would come across as much more unassuming, perhaps allowing them to approach prey more easily. Additionally, they would develop individual personality traits that their folklore counterparts, and many mythical monsters in general, would lack. Whereas the vampires of Eastern European folklore were mindless and rather animal-like, Count Dracula was intelligent, charming, with impeccable manners and good breeding, and he was more than capable of showing love, remorse, pleasure, hate, vengeance, and even fear. As time would go on, the vampire would gradually evolve in literature, movies, comic books, and games. And with each new iteration of the vampire, something new would be brought to the table. In Anne Rice's The Vampire Chronicles, we see a more personal side to the vampires, with the tragic protagonist, Louis, shown constantly at odds with his thirst for blood and holding on to what remains of his humanity. In the Underworld and Blade franchises, we see vampires, both good and evil, in more action-based roles, even experimenting with ideas of characters who are half vampire and half human, or even half vampire and half werewolf. The comic book and movie Thirty Days of Night 
brought vampires back to their mythological roots of being terrifying killing machines, birthed by infection and driven by bloodlust. There are countless more works of fiction centered around vampires, and though they all may differ in appearance, personality, even power and weakness, all owe their thanks to the vampire legends of old. The mythology surrounding vampires is truly a fascinating one, and one that is spread far across the world. Though the vampire may come in many shapes and sizes, the terror and subsequent thrill that ekes from their legend has intrigued the minds of people for countless generations. From ancient mythology, to medieval superstition, to the printed page and the silver screen, vampires have arguably become the most popular monster in the horror genre, and one of the most enduring monsters ever to spring forth from mythology.